In this episode of Vault Hunters, I'm running 12 vaults back to back. This took quite a while to do, but man, was it worth it. Make sure you watch till the end of the video to see all of the stuff that we managed to get. This is some insane loot. Also, if you do enjoy the video, please be sure to subscribe. I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year, so if you haven't yet, make sure you do, because you don't want to miss what's coming. But with that said, let's get right into the video. Perfect. We got our very first Omega statue. And this thing is going to be really cool. As you can see, it says item not selected. That is because we will get to pick one out of five of blocks to choose from. So, and also the statue is going to be big. But let's uh, let's place this here and see what we get. That we oh dear me. Okay, what's our options here? Riba concrete block, metal plate, line metal plate, slate. Uh, these are quite possibly the worst options that we could get. <laughs> now I'm gonna go with Slate, I think. Most possibilities. And oh wow, this thing's big. We can go ahead and make it a little bit smaller so it's more manageable. And there we go. And I think... I think I can do this. Oh yeah, <laughs> perfect. What would have been more ideal is getting a block that is something that will go in the vault altar and that would be vanilla blocks uh, but none of the blocks that we were offered was vanilla blocks so yeah that kind of complicated things however now that we are starting to get bigger statues i will make space in the floor perfect and our first one goes in the corner mm -hmm. almost in the corner there we go perfect let's just hope our next statue is going to be a little bit better. But anyways, welcome back to Vault Hunters. In the last episode, we crafted 12 vault crystals, which we're going to be running today. And I also said in the last episode that I would be making a better place for them, and I have. In the last episode, we placed them right here, but as you can see, they're gone. And they've been replaced by a mysterious lever. And I have made a crystal room. I'm actually pretty happy with this. So here's all the 12 vault crystals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go. So yeah, I've made a little bit of a vault room here. Hidden, secret. I like that idea. But when we make a bunch of crystals, I think that's cool. But I've done other stuff in between episodes as well. For starters, I have expanded the vault or room. Before it stopped right here, I've expanded it with two more sections and placed in the remaining ores. I've also removed the barrels and placed a chest at the end of the hallway here or in the middle of the hallway with all the vault gems. It just makes more sense to have it closer here where we're crafting stuff than all the way at the end, which was my original plan. However, that's not all. If we fly over here real quick, I have made a new pasture. I filled it with sand and sea grass and all that good stuff and that is because of the last episode as well, we got turtle spawn eggs. So, I'm gonna go ahead and spawn these guys, and if I take the seagrass, I should be able to get turtle eggs, which I should be able to pick up with silk touch. Yes. There we go. I no longer need to craft turtle eggs using Laramar. Now, in the last episode as well, I have said that like three times now, we also got this the dank and i've actually set it up but before we do that i have some coins in my inventory that i really want to spend i want to go through the trades here and just buy as many things as possible that are going to be valuable because most of them are not going to be yeah like this one sold three and then it's sold out and then i want to buy this common backpack and this is go ooh, hold on, Wu-Tex shots, can't go wrong with those. But the reason why I bought this common backpack is because this is going to be very useful inside the vaults, just to keep the inventory that much more nicely organized. Now, like I mentioned, I have set up the dank and I figured out how it works. So it has two modes, it has construction and it has bag. So when it has bag, I can open it up and I have sorted out a few things here. And in fact, I'm gonna need that power bar I just bought. Like before I would have my hardy apples, I would have potions and whatnot in my inventory, but now everything is set up 
in here. So when I switch it to construction, I can just scroll through it. I can easily get access to everything. So for example, the health potions is right next to the blocks. So are the ender pearls, the things that I need the most. So this, I think, is going to be a great addition to our vault running, which is going to be rele very relevant today. And that's pretty much everything I've done in between episodes. But like I said, we have a lot of stuff to do. Today, we need to run 12 vaults. And at the time of saying this, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Hmm. Perfect. I know exactly how I want to do this now. So finally, let the vault running commence. The first vault I ran had some really good modifiers. Speedy, gilded, extended and easy. I mean, what more could you ask for? Plus, the vault was a scavenger hunt, but I decided that I wanted to focus mainly on looting due to the gilded effect, which is exactly what I did. Well, it was what I did until I decided to change my mind midway through the run to try and see if it was possible for me to get all the items required to complete the scavenger hunt. And I actually got really, really close, surprisingly. I got all the items except for one of them, but I was sadly unable to finish the hunt before my time was up and I had to bail. Vault number two was a bit simpler. I got luck here, which is nice, and it was a standard obelisk one. So I dedicated this one to looting as well. Everything was going well until this happened. Nope. Oh boy. Yep. I could have died. But anyways, I continued looting and then came across a portal room. I also came across a city room, which of course is great for fighting gilded chests. And I decided to search a bunch of the buildings as well, which actually did pay off. So that might be worth doing in the future. I kept on looting and then I went back home. Vault number three. The third vault I managed to get luck here again, but this time with healing. However, it also had furious, which means mobs deal 50% more damage. But hey, at least I have healing which helped a lot against that. While I was looting, I collected the obelisks required to spawn the vault boss, just, you know, in case I decided to take the fight. And me being me, that's of course exactly what I did. However, what I didn't know was that I was about to unleash something I was not prepared for. I unleashed the beast. During the fight, I noticed the boss did not take as much damage as the previous bosses I have slain did. And this worried me. And on top of that, the beast did a lot more damage to me than I had expected. I managed to get him down below half health, but he was also getting me low. But as I was healing, I stopped hitting him for too long and he started to regain his health. Which really wasn't that good. But in the end, I was victorious and I had slain yet another vault boss. So far, I'm still undefeated. The next vault had speedy, but then also slowed and difficult. However, only three obelisks was required, and with an obelisk right in the starter room and the one after it, I decided to try and go on the hunt to defeat the boss as soon as possible to get as much loot as possible. I did stumble upon a city room, which I quickly looted the sewers and then continued my obelisk search. I also found this room where X marks a spot. There's a chance of getting a good room if you dig down, or a bad one, I decided to take the chance and it turned out it was the right choice. I looted it and again continued my search until I found the final obelisk. And then I began the fight. However, things were really not looking good this time around. This time it felt like I was doing even less damage, plus the mobs that had spawned in the room really didn't make it any easier. With the amount of healing items I was consuming, as well as the power bars and hardy apples, it wasn't looking like the fight would go in my favor. So. I decided to run. I ran through the entire vault, but what I didn't know was the boss would constantly try and teleport to me, making the trip back home even harder than I thought. He followed me all the way back to my portal, but I managed to bail. I had just escaped my first boss battle. Me, who was used to being able to defeat these guys like it's nothing, I wasn't beaten. But I lost that battle, which was the first time that that had ever happened. Vault number 5 was extended, plus it had frail, which increases durability damage, which really isn't that great. Plus I was weakened, so I focused on looting this time around. I found another Xbox the spot room, as I call them, and it turned out to give an ore cave. Now I did a bunch of looting, but in the end, I ended up finding the last obelisk that was needed to summon the boss. And guess what? I clearly hadn't learned my lesson from the last time, because I summoned it. 
I tried using my sword to see if that would help, but it didn't. The boss took even less damage this time around and I really quickly realized that I had lost the battle again and I ran for my life. Yet again the boss followed me throughout the entire vault, but I managed to bail. That's the second time I had to run from a boss fight. I was not happy about this. Vault number 6. This one is a very interesting one. I got difficult and trapped but it was a scavenger hunt and I decided to try and complete this one. I really wanted to finish a scavenger hunt. So I began the search for the items required. However in my search I discovered the scallium room, the factory, I'm not sure what this one is called, but no matter what, it has a bunch of guild chests at the bottom of the pit if you complete the mini game, which of course I did and it was definitely worth it. After that room I continued my search for the items required to complete this vault. I turned in the items I had collected so far, but sadly it wasn't much and there was less than half of the vault time left. I kept looking and searching, but eventually I ran out of time and I had to bail back home. Now, Vault Run number 7. We have passed the midway mark and this one turned out to be yet another scavenger hunt. And I was determined to complete this one and so far I was doing well. I was on the hunt, I needed to kill spiders, skeletons and zombies to get what I needed. I was close, I just needed one more zombie nose, one more saddlebag and two more spider soul charms and I would get this completed. And after more slaying and collecting, now all I needed is just one spider soul charm. I have never been closer and then this happened. <gasps> yes! I actually did it! I did it! Do I get, do I get a scavenger crate? I've never gotten one of those before. I actually managed to do it. Vault number 8. This one I got was another scavenger hunt. And with my previous victory, I was ready to try and complete another one. So I got to work. Things were looking good. I was getting the items in a good pace. And one of the items I thought would be the most difficult, the eerie water vial, I think it's called, turned out to be one of the easiest for me to get. So with that small victory, I was even more confident that I could pull this off. So I continued with haste. And with just three pink bangles remaining, I was so close to completing the the run but I was facing a problem my food you see I also got a hunger effect when I entered the vault and I had run out of food which was a big problem because I would start losing health and I wasn't able to run anymore but I managed to find some food in some chests so I can now continue the hunt for the last two items time was running short but I managed to complete the scavenger hunt that's two hunts in a row. Well, number nine. This time I decided to only be looting. For real this time. I had taken too many losses to the previous bosses and I didn't want to risk another fail. I managed to find a cool room I hadn't been in before. I'm gonna call this a paint room. It had gilded chests in the paint buckets, so that was not too bad at all. Vault number 10, not much happened in this vault either. Had a bunch of negative modifiers, so mainly did a bunch of looting. Nothing special happened here. Moving on. Vault number 11. Now in this vault we got easy and extended, but that's not all. I managed this time around to find the Rubik's Cube room. That's at least what I'm calling it. I already had some of the colors required to complete the puzzle in my tank, but I needed to find one pink and two green to unlock this. So it was time to start searching. I managed to find the ones that I needed and it was most definitely worth it. 25 gilded chests right for the taking. Oh, except that one. Oh, yeah, that one exploded. And vault 12. Now for the 12th vault. Well, you see, vault 11 was actually the 12th vault. You see, I'm not sure what happened. I had 12 vault crystals of which I ran every single one of them, but I only have 11 clips from Vault Runs, so I'm not sure what has happened here. And just to show you, the room is completely empty. No Vault Crystals in any of these pedestals. I'm really confused, but I guess I must have accidentally deleted a clip or something. I'm not sure. But regardless, 12 Vaults has now been ran and we have a lot of loot to go through. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing. But instead of just going through where it's all mixed up and everything is cluttered together, I've actually gone ahead and organized everything. But now let's get started with some of the more boring stuff to get it out of the way. For example, these compressed blocks. I got a, a few, not too many, but a few, which is going to be really useful. 
forward making new vault crystals. So not very exciting, but definitely very important. Next we have enchanted bottles, which we have actually have half a chest here with just enchanted bottles. Now this one is probably the least exciting one. I'm just gonna yeah, do that. Moving on. Also managed to get a bunch of health potions, which I will definitely be turning into instant health potions tier two. Boom, boom, boom. And they can be added to my dank. Enchanted books, got quite a few. Very useful ones, protection 4, efficiency 5, fortune 3, power 4, protection 4, all that good stuff. Finally, we got some vanilla items. We got half a stack of diamond blocks, almost two full stacks of blocks of iron, a full stack of netherite, a bunch of gold, netherite scrap, and all of this stuff. Also, this overgrowth seed, I'm not sure what this is used for, but it is Botania, so it will probably become handy at some point. We got two blocks of netherite. I don't think I've ever had that much netherite in a Minecraft world. Now we are getting to the more exciting things. First off, found a lot of gems. 20 Alexandrite gems, 34 Benutite, 15 Black Opal, 40 Larimar, 20 Penutite, 21 Wu to Die, and even more of the ores. And I even found an Escalium ore and a Bomb Ignite ore, which is really, really good. Oh, sorry, Th 35, but I gotta count the stuff that's actually in the item frames. So let's add the actual gems to this collection. And we're gonna go ahead and add the actual ores to the ore collection area. Escalium. Bomb Ignite, Alexandrite, Benyotite, Black Opal, Wu to Die, and I apparently actually don't have any Painite ore. Oh, hello neighbor. So I guess they'll just be stacked over there. Change my mind, they'll be there. Now we got a lot of statues, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. So uh, yeah, all right, we got one generating terracotta, Oak leaves, stone. Okay, so far these are really good because these are all vanilla blocks which might appear in the vault altar. So those are really, really good. Oh wow, it's like an action figure collection. <laughs> I need a screenshot of this. Now if you think we got a lot of statues, we definitely got a lot of traders. This thing is almost completely full. I'm definitely gonna be adding all of these to the machine. And this list is getting quite long. Legendary treasure, right click to identify. I don't know what this is, I guess we'll find out. However, now we're getting to the really interesting things. This one, we got over three stacks of star essence, which, if I get a crafting table, I can create 22 star shards, which brings us very much closer to making even more knowledge stars, and we can make three knowledge stars if we have enough Vault diamond blocks. We also got a bunch of vault dust, which we haven't really been using yet, but will probably become quite useful in the future. We also got 17 skill essence, 18 vault essence, 21 vault diamonds, and a stack and seven catalyst fragments. These vault essence, again, we haven't used them yet, but they will be very much useful in the future. Same goes with the skill essence, as we can use it to turn it into skill shards, which we can then use for other very cool things. Next up, we got things like relic booster packs. And speaking of that, we got four stacks and a half. We're just gonna call this a half. So hopefully we're going to get quite a lot of stuff from this. That's my hopes anyway, but here we go. Well, two stacks down and we got, well, we got something. Got a mystery box, but we also got Gold Essence from the Richardy Chest, which I don't think is a set that I have gotten yet. Nope, that's a new set. That's good. All right, next two stacks. Okay, that round was really, really good. We managed to completely level up and we got more mystery boxes and we got Fire Element from the Element set and Combat Vest from the T-Wolf set which we're starting to get quite a lot of. From the element set, I don't think, yep, that's a new one as well. Final 31. 
cupcake, which we actually didn't already have. I'm very excited for when we will be able to make our very first relic. However, since we just got a few mystery boxes, it's only fair, I think, that we go ahead and open a bunch of mystery boxes. This is going to be a mess, but here we go. Now what I'm actually going to do is take a bunch of spruce chests, place them like this, and I'm just gonna get everything in there. Well, that's a lot of sorting. I was hoping for a pig orang, but I guess this works as well. Oh boy, this is a lot of sorting. Yep, I'll, uh, I'll be right back. All right, now in this one, we got even more stuff. We got a lot of burger pieces, which I'm actually going to try and craft as many burgers as we possibly can. We already have 60, so it'll be interesting to see how many more we can make. Okay, so we got a stack there and 28. So we now in total have as two stacks and 24 vault burgers. Oh, wow. That's some... Um, that that's that's a lot definitely gonna be saving those other than all of that we got a bunch of different apples we got a hunter's eye we got some vault nuggets 33 wu-tex shards 38 vault plating which permanently adds 50 max durability to any vault gear so that's useful if we get a vault gear that we really like that we want to last a bit longer we can slap those on there vault scrap to craft a repair course and we also got repair course themselves everything is now empty Except for those two. And this is where I get really, really excited. I think I'm going to start with the top one. We got remove one level of ability Vein Miner and regain the skill point spent. So right now I have Vein Miner at level three out of five. I could use that bottle to then get it down to level two out of five and I would then get the skill point back. So we got one for Vein Miner, two for Mega Jump, one for Strength, Breakable and Frenzy. Now I'm not interested in these, I'm interested in these. Choice flask, used to remove selected specialization of ability Mega Jump. One of the special, spe, spe, hey, specialization abilities that I've been very sad that I picked was the one on Mega Jump. Specifically, Fat, because let, let me show you. Before I was able to use it to jump really high, now I, I, I don't even jump two blocks and I never use it. So I'm actually going to use this. And with that, I unselected the specialization for Mega Jump. And I'm not picking another. <laughs> so before I couldn't jump, I could barely jump one block, if that. Now, yep, much better. I can use it to get out of a sticky situation, which is exactly what I wanted for. I also got this one used to remove selected specialization of ability cleanse, which currently is mend, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm not going to use that flask, but, oh. I think we might need, hmm, yep, bonk, flop, yeet, yoink, better, eh. And... Sure, yoink, no, yes, oh, right, boop. Now, for the unidentified, this is exciting because we got a lot, but not only did we get a lot, most of it is totems, but we did get an axe, two helmets, and two pairs of leggings right here. But not only that, you see there are the gray question marks, which is scrappy, some of it is scrappy plus, but we also got common plus, which makes me very excited because we're potentially going to get something that is, well, better than scrappy, which is what we have so far. So I think I'm going to do the exciting thing of rolling the armor and the axe first, and I'm gonna do it all at once. This, by the way, is the first armor that I'm rolling. I really hope this is good because I I definitely need more armor. Yikes, that was loud. Let's take a look at the axe first. All right, so it's common. Got two repair levels, one level and level requirement is 28. Damage is 11.3. If I just did this, the damage would increase to 14.3, which is not a whole lot better, but it is definitely better. I think I'm going to keep this axe as a as a backup, I guess. And I think I'm going to reserve this chest for totems. I'm going to add another chest over here, at least one for weapons, and I'll probably do one for armor eventually. So when one of these breaks, this will be able to take its place. Now for the armor, let's take a look at the helmets. So we got Scrappy, it got four repair slots, one level and plus one armor. So I need to compare it with my current armor which is three, this is five, plus I got 0.2 armor toughness, and I, I don't know what that golden thing is. So 
Right now, I get five armor bars. Now, I get six. Now, ooh, oh. Okay, 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 we have a choice here. It already has plus 2% cooldown reduction. It's common. It has one less armor, but it does have more armor toughness. And it has two levels, whereas this only has one. Yeah, this, not as much armor. But I think it will be worth it. I love the cooldown reduction, especially because I'm using axes. Yep, I'm 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 very hyped about that one. I think I'm gonna go ahead and right away, yoink, steal this and do that. That'll be for armor. But now for the leggings. All right, the leggings for armor, point four armor toughness. They're scrappy, three repair levels, one level, and soul bound. So even if I die in the vault, this item will stay with me. That's very cool. These. Wow, they can be repaired a lot. So these have no levels. To be fair, it is very similar to my netherite leggings. <laughs> yeah, wow, they're very similar. But either way, they are going to be a little bit better because they do have some armor toughness. These don't, and they have a potential level to be upgraded. Plus a soul bound, which isn't that bad. The other ones though, yeah, no. I'll be placing this here for now. We will be enchanting this very soon. But first, we have a lot of totems. <laughs> to go through. I think I'm gonna do the blue ones first. We're gonna do all of these. Valera Totem, two levels. Wendar with two levels, but plus 3% resistance. Ooh. Tenor's Totem, Omega Rarity, plus two health. That's an extra heart, plus more durability. Plus it has five levels, it can be, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's a, that's a, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> and this is just common. Yeah, but we do still have a lot of these which could turn into something good. So we will have to give them a look. Plus one speed, only two levels. Weakening cloud, two levels, two levels. Hunger immunity and two levels. Level one plus one strength. Okay, not that great. Not that great, not that great. Epic? That has five levels and wither immunity. I like the plus one strength because strength. Meh. Plus three health? That's one and a half hearts extra. Could you quiet down up there? Thank you. Ay ay ay. Resistance, slowness immunity, wither immunity. Slowness immunity is nice actually. Wither immunity as well. Three extra health. One and a half hearts extra. I mean that's not half bad, but this does also have plus 500 durability and way more levels. So yeah. It, uh, this wins. So that was all of the loot on this wall, but we're not quite done because in the vaults, I managed to defeat one vault boss and two scavenger hunts. My very first two scavenger hunts. I'm very excited for those, but I think we should take a look at the boss crate first. And like I said, I haven't organized these. I thought it would be best to look at them as they are. All right, what do we get? Ooh, unidentified relic. Contains a random relic. Nice. And the rest, pretty good. Got another trader. Hardy apple, not bad. Unidentified vault axe. We can run that while we place this in here. And we got 2% leech? Leech? So here's what I think this does. Say I do 20 hearts of damage with this axe. I get 2% of that health added to me. That's definitely another axe for when one of those breaks. All right, unidentified relic. Yep, that's something we haven't had yet. I don't, th oh, it's a duplicate. Uh, anyways, the rest of this, really, really good stuff. Mystery box and a golden carrot. Oh, multiple golden carrots. All right, I don't know which one of these scavenger crates was my first scavenger crate, but this is the first scavenger crate that we are going to be opening. Here we go. Ooh, okay, unidentified vault axe, leggings, boots. Okay, so we might get some boots as well today. Another right star, another unidentified relic. All right. I'm hoping one of these days to get a pig ring. Uh, duplicate as well. Are you kidding me? We just got that today. Well, let's run this. I'm ready to compare boots. All right. Three armor. So pretty much the same. However, it does have knockback resistance. And armor toughness, leggings, yeah, not as good as the ones I've picked aside. And the axe, withering cloud, no levels, not interested. And again, everything else, really good loot. And that's a very cruel crate to add to my collection. All right, final crate. What do we got? Ooh, okay, another unidentified relic, some more pants, 
another statue, mystery box, Pandora's box. That reminds me, an Nautilus shell as well. That's really good. Uh, we didn't finish this barrel over here, and we actually got <laughs> some more Pandora boxes. Um, so that's good. But first, uh, I was hoping for Pigarang. Statue generating cobblestone. That's not bad. Unidentified wall leggings. Ooh, hold up. That's better. Four armor, five armor. A little bit less armor toughness. Does not have soul bound, however. Does have one levels. It does have one level in levels. Yeah, that's gonna improve armor slightly, which is really what I need to focus on. So, yep, I think I'm gonna take these leggings. Now, Pandora's boxes can be either really, really good or could be something trash, kind of like kelp. So, I'm gonna go ahead and open one at a time. Ooh, like I said, could be really, really good. All right. Golden apples, 14. Like I said, kelp. <laughs> and last one. Yep, kelp. Got it. Well, let's see what we get for the pants. Three armor. Yep, nope, not, not good. Everything else, though, really good. Now, to finish this barrel off, we got magnetite, mystery eggs, and a bunch of vault bronze. Now, how many blocks of... Vault diamonds. Oh, <laughs> two vault diamond blocks. Okay, so if I take this and if my math is correct. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm doing something wrong here, aren't I? Uh, yep. And now. Yes. Four knowledge stars. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> quite an achievement. Now, I do know that this episode is getting quite long, but I think that it's only fitting before we end it that we actually go ahead and enchant the armor. And I actually decided to swap out the helmet. And the reason for that is I just really need to focus mainly on armor. While this one is good, it does have more armor toughness, I think I will appreciate having extra armor instead. So it can go up here. However, uh, with that set though, it does look kind of cool i guess <laughs> but but yeah I'm, I'm gonna stick with this one let me know your thoughts on that down below in the comments but anyways let us enchant things so i'm definitely going to put unbreaking three on this totem that's for sure there we go and i don't know if it's going to replace my wendra totem or not i guess it depends both of them are really good i might save this one for when this eventually breaks because it is half durability i guess we'll find out now for the boots of course they're gonna get protection four we're gonna go ahead and put Unbreaking 3 on them. And that's when I realize that I need more levels. So we're gonna go ahead and put Unbreaking 3 on them. And then Depth Strider, because, you know, we, we get those vaults with water in them. It's nice to be able to swim faster. And there we go. Then the leggings, of course, are gonna get Protection 4. And Unbreaking 3. Now the helmet is gonna get respiration and unbreaking three again for when we're underwater and then it's gonna get of course protection four boom now unfortunately we do not have a chest plate just yet but i mean if we if we just take our another right chest plate on which isn't half bad we're looking kind of stylish and look at our armor as well before when we went into the vaults we would have this amount of armor now we have this amount of armor when we get a chest plate i think we will be able to get it all the way up to max which is really going to benefit us but for now this is a huge upgrade i'm gonna put this armor right here ready for next time and speaking of next time i think that is all we have time for for this episode we completed our objective we ran 12 vaults and we got a lot of loot from it it was definitely worth it. Also, this was my first video where I did like 12 vaults at Vault Marathon. So let me know if there's anything you think I could improve on. The way I did the vaults, the way I did the looting, anything like that. Do leave your feedback down below in the comments. It means a lot. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Really hope you have enjoyed. If you... Ow. <laughs> I just wanted to get to my chair. Like I was saying, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you do, do consider hitting that subscribe button because you don't want to miss what's coming. Also, remember to enable those notifications so you don't miss out. But anyways, hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.